If you're a fan of Night in the Woods, then you've probably spent a fair bit of time looking for similar games. Narrative games with themes like mental illness, the struggle of everyday workers, and companionship. Well, in a few weeks, there's a game coming out that appears to be heavily influenced by Night in the Woods. It's called Fall of Porcupine. Developed by Critical Rabbit, a German indie studio, Fall of Porcupine is an adventure-based game set for release on June 15th. It tells the story of Finley, an anthropomorphic bird and medical resident, and will reportedly focus on the dark secrets of the town of Porcupine and the mental and emotional toll that comes with working in healthcare. It's a solid setup for this type of game, and I'm looking forward to seeing the final product. Fortunately, we don't have to wait to get a good idea of what the developers are trying to accomplish here, because a demo of the game is available on Steam. I played it a few weeks back, and I've decided to review it for you so you can get an idea of whether or not it might be a game you'd be interested in. It has some noteworthy strong points, enough that I definitely plan on buying the game and reviewing the finished version. But there is one pretty noticeable flaw that I'm hoping they'll patch up before release. Let's start with the positives. The soundtrack is tremendous. It has this wonderful acoustic indie feel that takes me back to Blackwell Academy from Life is Strange 1. It really matches the tone of the game and helps to highlight every scene. In a game like this, where there's no spoken dialogue, having a good soundtrack is essential. It keeps things moving, makes it feel more alive, and takes your attention away from all the reading you're doing. So on that front, Critical Rabbit is off to a great start. Another strong point is the characters. I don't know about you, but my favorite types of stories are ones that are more character focused and have a supporting cast that goes through a lot of development themselves and in turn helps support the growth of the protagonist. Fall of Porcupine certainly seems to be taking this route with its approach to storytelling and I'm interested to see how the relationships between Finley and his friends develop as the game goes on. The two main companion characters we meet in the demo, Carl and Pima, are both very likable and seem like they'll be positive influences on Finley. Speaking of Finley, it's hard to get a read on him at this point, but it seems like the major arc of his story will be dealing with being a wide-eyed, hopeful doctor in a rundown hospital in an environment that is already unhealthy for healthcare workers. It's an interesting approach, as it seems like instead of getting a protagonist in recovery, as we see in games like Night in the Woods, Disco Elysium, and Senua's Sacrifice, we're getting a protagonist who's on top of his game at the beginning. Presumably, we tasked with helping him weather the storm of working at St. Ursula's, which is definitely a unique and interesting approach to this type of game. The secondary characters are great, too. Giuliano only has a handful of lines, but I'd love to have a drink at his bar. And Ingrid is that classic front desk lady that we all know and love. Glendower, the unseen janitor, seems like he'll be memorable too, and really helps characterize the hospital. Which is pretty important, because it seems like St. Ursula's is going to be a character itself. They do a great job of emphasizing how run down the place is. It's not just the janitor fixing the elevators with duct tape. The doctors are working with limited supplies, doing the best they can to help patients with whatever they can scrounge up. I don't work in healthcare, but I used to work at a place like this. Somewhere that was rapidly falling apart and constantly underfunded, but kept chugging along because my coworkers and I loved what we did. It captures that type of atmosphere incredibly well, and I have to say that out of all of the positives about Fall of Porcupine, this might be the one that grabbed me the most. Glendower reminds me so much of the janitor where I used to work, who routinely impressed me with his ability to fix ancient and broken equipment with a box of scraps like he was Tony Stark or something. Jeff... If by chance you're watching this, I miss the hell out of you, man. As for the minigames, I enjoyed them, but I'll be interested to see how people respond to them in the full game. They're pretty challenging, and the ones that involve holding multiple buttons at one time almost feel like they were designed for Spider-Man, because in some cases it's damn near impossible to hold all of them at once. But given that one of the game's major themes is the stress and difficulty of healthcare work, I think this might be intentional. I'm a Soulsborne fan, so I enjoy difficulty when it serves the experience the developers are trying to convey, but I'm not sure that everyone else in the game's target audience will feel the same way. This is, after all, being marketed as a narrative game, 
and narrative games don't usually have much of a learning curve. So I'll be curious to see how all of this shakes out. In terms of story, we don't get much plot. There's a harvest festival on the way. There's brewing animosity between the town of Porcupine and St. Ursula's. And there's something mysterious going on up in the top floor of the hospital that seems like it will be the driving force of the narrative. In the demo, it jumps to that story beat somewhat quickly. But that's not unusual for a slice of life game like this. Now, in terms of negatives, I really only have one which is that the game's English translation is a bit rough in some places. It's not terrible, but it is enough to be distracting at times. Given that the dialogue shown in the trailers is much more crisp, I'm hoping that this will be a demo-only issue. But despite that, the game's spirit and characters show through. So even if this does carry over to the release, my thought is that it won't be too detrimental to the final product but that it could be the type of thing that prevents a good game from being a great game. And that's a sentiment that echoes my hopes for Fall of Porcupine in general. I think it will be a good game. It should be the type of narrative, character-driven adventure that fans of Night in the Woods have been aching for. And if they nail a few things that were a bit rough in the demo, it could even be a great game. Critical Rabbit, I wish you best of luck on the road to release. I'm very much looking forward to June 15th. For those of you who are interested in checking out the demo for yourself, it's available on the game's Steam page. I'll also be posting a Let's Play of the full demo, without commentary, on Sunday at about noon. So be sure to pop by if you're interested in checking it out that way. In the meantime, stay tuned for more Night in the Woods content. I'll have another video out on Friday. This one will cover everything we know about Revenant Hill, the next game from the developers of Night in the Woods. See you guys then.